I am really looking forward to seeing you again on Sunday morning, friends, for Gathered Worship. Uh, it's been so much fun to just kind of get traction and momentum as we go into the fall here together. We will again be in uh, Mark's Gospel, of course, uh, chapter 9, verses 1 through 13, which is the Transfiguration, a mystifying, kind of elusive account. What is going on there? It's in three of the Gospel accounts, I think, and um, it's very different. Jesus goes up on a mountain with Peter, James, and John and is turns bright white. Moses and Elijah show up with them. Peter says, hey, let's <laughs> pitch some tents for you all. And then they come down from the mountain. What is going on there? We're going to um, reflect on that, explore it. Uh, I have been on a journey of discovery about that passage, and I'm really looking forward to spending that time with you uh, in addition to uh, singing together and praying together and just being together. Uh, being together to do what Ezra chapter 10 refers to. I've been in my Old Testament readings in the mornings, my just personal devotional reading. I've been uh, in this part of the Old Testament. I just wrapped up the book of Ezra, heading into Nehemiah, and I noticed something. I've read it before, but I never really noticed it where the people are needing to come out of mixed marriages. They're repenting. They're getting they're, 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 um, they're turning to God again. And they say, and Ezra, help us. We want you to lead us in it. And, um, and some of the people say to Ezra, um, arise for it is your task, namely leading the people out, uh, you know, uh, leading the people out of, um, of mixed marriage and, and so on, a fresh faithfulness to God. Arise for it is your task and we are with you. Be strong and do it. And then Ezra did, in fact, uh, lead the people. Uh, I just point out a very simple little observation here. Uh, the two phrases, we are with you, be strong and do it. Those are the two things we are coming together to do. We all want to walk faithfully with God. When we come together on a Sunday morning, among other things, what we're doing is we're looking one another in the eye and we're saying, uh, I am with you, do it. Be strong and do it. Um, you're not alone. Let's walk with God together. Uh be strong and do it is doable if the first part is there. That second part is doable if the first part, namely non-aloneness. We're doing this together. We want to put our arms around one another, so to speak, and uh, and, and, and walk with God together. So let's come together uh, this coming Sunday morning and do that. And let's be doing that throughout the week through phone calls, text messages, emails, stopping at one another's home, encouraging each other, rejoicing over one another, honoring one another every chance we get. Let's be factories. Let's be fountains of fresh encouragement and life to one another. Why? Because that's how God treats us. So we get to have the privilege of just passing that on a little bit to one another. Lots going on in the church. I'm not going to rattle through everything. Uh, check the website, men, women, children's ministry, middle school, high school. Uh, we had 40 some college students at the church on Sunday. Let's put our arms around them uh, and let's just keep being the family of God together. I will mention one thing, October 9th, is um, the date we are narrowing in on to have a family gathering, a congregational meeting, uh, to talk through uh, several important things, probably 6 p.m.-ish that evening, October 9th. I'd be grateful if you would just block that out on your uh, schedules. I recognize some growth groups normally meet then. I'd be grateful if you would um, be willing to, to be with us here at the church that evening. And um, I love you. Can't wait to see you Sunday. Jesus loves you. And we'll talk soon.